Hello, everybody. Welcome to the predictions. I don't know why I'm feigning a smile, Mikey, because I'm, I'm coming in hot here. Um, this is the Premier League predictions, by the way. Round 24. Last week, I was coasting it. I had a cigar on with four correct results over the weekend. And then in the Brentford Man City game, I am on. It is 2 1 to Brentford, and I'm thinking feet up, definite win. Didn't check what you had down as the score for that one. Phil Foden scores. And my three points go to one point, and it transpires you had 3-1. On the nose, which makes it equal for the week, Mikey, how do you feel about being a lame last-minute pickpocket in the, in the predictions and making me so infuriated at not winning? My, my initial reaction, Ben, um, let's go back to France 98 when France beat Italy in the penalty shootout and Barthez miscounted. And he didn't realise that France had won yet. So oh, I was a little bit like that okay. at first. I, I knew that we'd both gone for Man City to win, but I hadn't realised until I went back and, and checked that I'd gone for 3-1 for and got a perfect score, which, yeah, salvages me a, an unlikely point. Um, Mick McCarthy-esque, wasn't it, really? <laughs> I just all I can think of now. It's a great France '98 reference. I think my favourite goalkeeper in back four that was Barthez, Lizarazu, Desailly, Blanc, and Turam. Yeah, no wonder nobody scored past them for the entire World Cup or whatever <laughs> it was. Unbelievable. Um, right, well, let's get into this then. Um, as ever, get your own predictions down in the comments, Mikey. There are two types of people in this life. People who put their predictions in before the games and people who comment on our predictions after the games. You know which one you want to be. Um, and we're straight in there with a rather fearsome and informed looking Manchester City team hosting um, a less informed team in Everton. What are you thinking? Yeah, this is the early kickoff, isn't it, Ben? So Manchester City have the huge incentive of knowing that they can go top yes, and have all yeah, of the yeah. psychological stuff that comes with that. Um, I think everybody knows that the Etihad isn't a particularly raucous place for a no. Saturday early kickoff. Um, maybe more so than than some other clubs. Goodison was absolutely bouncing last week against against Spurs, wasn't it? Um, but in those early kickoffs under Pep Guardiola, and this is all Premier League games, uh, home and away, they've they've managed to win twenty five out of thirty four. Um, the only one that's they played this season, as far as I'm aware, was the one against Liverpool, which they they flat to deceive a little bit and they ended up drawing that. So there might be something in that. But Manchester City, not only are they sort of finding their form and this is the time of year when they start winning every week, but also they've got no injuries at all. So he can literally pick whoever he wants out of that beautiful squad that he's got. And I I could see him maybe rotating a little bit. He played a really, really strong team at, at Brentford. I could see a little bit of rotation. We might see... De Bruyne come out. Um, Doku might get a rest, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really really difficult for for Everton, especially as Phil Foden. In, Phil Foden is in such good form. He's had eight Don't goal involvements in the last Foden. six games. <laughs> <laughs> He's also got a really good record against um, Everton as well. So yeah, wouldn't um, bet against him scoring again this weekend. Everton a really good point in the end against against Tottenham, and Anana and Decore both could be back which would give them a real boost in midfield. Um, they scored two from set pieces in that game against Tottenham. They'll see that as the their best chance of nicking a goal against Manchester City. But I think it's going to be really difficult for them. Um, I could see Erling Haaland getting back in amongst the goals. I've gone for a prediction of 3-1 to Manchester City. I just had a look. You're saying about winning every week while um while you were talking then. If you count all the cup games and the uh, World Club, they they're on nine wins in a row already, which is pretty And they're um, only just getting started, aren't they? So. Well kind of got their first team on the pitch now, haven't they? So yeah, I've it's fairly simple to go for the win. In terms of the score line, I'm gonna go with what you said that they might um you know, might do a bit of rotating, so it might not be a massive high score line. And Sean Dyche is always good at setting teams up to defend well. So I will go 2 0. Uh, you went 3 1, did you, Mikey? Yeah. 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 Right, let's move on. Fulham versus Bournemouth, the Scott Parker derby. So Fulham last week, Ben, I gave you the stat that they <laughs> haven't won away at Turf Moor since King George VI was on the throne. Uh, that, that, 
has continued after they couldn't see out the win against Burnley. So I've got another one for you this week, Ben. This one, um, n- let maybe less exciting, but it was April 1992, the last time Fulham beat Bournemouth at home. Um, elsewhere in South West London that day, Benny Hill passed away. Oh. Um, so a, a random fact for you there, but that goes to show just how long ago <laughs> long ago it was. They've had one win in seven league games, Fulham as well. They're just not in good form. Amando Broya is is in line for his first start. Bournemouth, though, as good as they are and as high as I've been on Bournemouth, they're winless in four now. Um, but they're safe, aren't they? And I'd say they're even though they're only just above Fulham, I'd say that maybe because of the fact that they started so poorly, it feels like they're they're in a better place than Fulham. And Dominic Solanke's their main man. I say this every time, but he's got a good record against Fulham. He's scored five in his last five against them. But I just feel like with neither team sort of desperate for a win and there's no real sort of cutting edge for either side right now, despite Dominic Solanke, who I mentioned, I, I could see this one ending in a in a 1-1 draw. I was going to say 1-1. And I never double you up, do I? By the way, one of those Dominic Solanke goals is one of the best kickoffs I've ever seen in my life. I know it was kind of mocking Scott Parker a little bit there, but um, they, they scored within like three passes from the from the centre. It was an amazing goal at Craven Cottage. Um, I think it's going to be a draw, but you've taken the obvious 1-1. So I'll go for the Desmond against my better judgment, but I guess you have to go first every time, don't you? So I'm, I'm sure I benefit from that. Um, greatly. And let's move on to Liverpool, who went under at Arsenal in the in the big game at 4.30 on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, Liverpool v Burnley does look like the most predictable predictable one of the weekend, doesn't it? Uh, although, as you mentioned, they, they had that damaging defeat against Arsenal last week and they just weren't very good at all. They've gone from their best performance of the season at home to Chelsea and then followed it up with a really disjointed performance away at away at um, Arsenal. Um, and I can't use my Mo Salah fact anymore, can I? Like He's going to be missing again, but now they have um, lost a match without Mo Salah. Uh, Sabozlai also unlikely to be playing this week. Kanate suspended. The only good news is that Endo is back from the Asia Cup, so he could return, return in midfield. Liverpool is still unbeaten at Anfield. There's something to be said for that. It's still up there with the SE had as the hardest place to go this season. Burnley needs something drastic, don't they? So maybe a win at Liverpool could reignite or ignite their their well, it's not even stuttering, is it? Their their really poor season. But to be honest, they they rank so low in all of the all of the little statistical tables. They just don't create enough chances. If they did win, it would be the shock of the season, but I just can't see it happening. So I've gone for Liverpool three, Burnley nil. I agree with everything you just said. I mean, you're, I, I can see you're doing a great job trying to hype it up and bring the, bring the two sides together. I think with it being at Anfield, it just feels like a walkover. And clip this out if Burnley nick themselves some unlikely away win. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go... Well, I'll go for a three-goal a three goal deficit as well. I'm going to go 4-1, Mikey. Liverpool, okay. four... Burnley won. That's probably not worth a bonus point, though, is it, given their uh, places in the table? Um, wow, Mikey, we both said Luton. OK, it doesn't matter if they lose at Newcastle um, because this is the this is the real quiz. They got four goals and they got another point. Luton's, um, they're becoming everyone's second team, like Kevin King is Newcastle in 1995, aren't they? Um, and they play Sheffield United. And I make them favourites for this one. Yeah, I think everyone makes them favourites in this one. Like you say, they're the entertainers at the moment. They've scored 14 goals in the last five games. And Edwards has found a way to get Morris and Adebayo on the pitch at the same time from the start. And they're just proving such a handful, aren't they, for for every team? Like, really, I think at the start of the season, we we worried about a lack of goals for Luton, but they're just finding their feet, aren't they? And I think they're just... They've found so much confidence in recent weeks. I think maybe it all started with that draw against Liverpool. And after that, they've kind of taken it onto another level. And Ross Barkley, I think, would oh. would get into pretty much any midfield at the moment. Maybe not Manchester City, but he's in such good form, isn't he? Such a good ball-carrying centre midfielder. I think decision-making has been his main issue over the years. But 
I mean, you can't can't fault it at the moment. Um, Sheffield United, on the other hand, it's not a great time to be a blade, is it? Um, they just haven't recovered from that 3-2 defeat against Luton where they conceded those two really bizarre late own goals um, on Boxing Day. They've got um, they've probably got Gribich, uh, Lowe, McBurney and Brewster potentially back in the squad, but all I can see is a is a home win. I've gone for three one with Luton continue to score goals for fun. So you haven't gone for the clean sheet. I mean, I'm going to back Luton. By the way, do you ever have like an old tweet of yours resurface? I've got like a, a few retweets and likes on Ross Barkley's signing being announced. Then I, I retweeted and I put textbook Luton there. And that seems to have resurfaced this week. Um, we've been playing really well. So I was on top of that um, from the from the word go. If anyone was going to rehabilitate him, I'll go for the clean sheet win then, Mikey. It might be tense at the Kenny. Um, I'm going to back Luton and I'm going to go for a one niller. Um, and we are going to move on to Spurs versus Brighton. Good luck with this one. I'm <laughs> pulling one out of my backside for this, I think. Yeah, I mean, all, I mean, nil-nil would be the the biggest shock here, wouldn't it? Both both of these teams just seem to guarantee goals. Brighton won this fixture 4-2 back in December, so it did live up to what we were expecting with loads of goals. Son might be back for Spurs. Uh, South Korea finally got knocked out of the, the Asian Cup. They didn't really have a particularly good campaign. Jurgen Klinsmann is, is their head coach, Ben, and uh, he's just not very popular in South Korea, especially now. Uh, Eves Basuma could be back as well from the Africa Cup of Nations, which will give them a boost in central midfield, but they've looked a little bit light. Tottenham have scored two or more in their last eight Premier League games, so we know that they can score goals for fun. But Brighton just continues to baffle, don't they? Dumping 4-1 win following a 4-0 defeat. Jao Pedro has eight goals in his last seven matches. Both teams concede a lot of penalties. They both conceded five each, so I could see a Jao Pedro penalty somewhere in this game. I think I've been scorned too many times by Brighton this season doing these predictions, so I'm going to go for a for a home win here, but it's going to be narrow. And maybe this is too low scoring, Ben. I've gone for 2-1 to Tottenham, but could it could easily be a 3-2, couldn't it? I was thinking 3-2 as you were talking, actually. Um, so... Let's do the thing where your explanation makes lots of sense. So the opposite will happen and we'll go for a okay. low scoring game. I think I am behind Spurs on this one. So I'm going to go for one nil Spurs with no other explanation other than we're expecting the opposite. And um, it's football, man. Um, it's football and football's... Football's really fun, but football's even more fun, Mikey, if you play a bit of match bingo over the weekend. We're brought to you in association with, in association with my teeth and with match bingo as ever. Um, I'm going to be on the watch along on Friday night, playing along with Sheffield Wednesday in Birmingham, but for free, and who doesn't like free, and this will be covering some of the lower league teams, you can play the bingos game at 3 p.m., which is a slightly different one. So go and get involved over at Match Bingo. If you want them to know we sent you, which we would kind of like you to tell them, then you need to click on that QR code up on the screen. Now, that is Match Bingo, and I'm duty-bound to ask you, to tell you to please play responsibly. Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Brentford. Um, public apology from both of us. What a win. Um, by Wolves at Chelsea, Mikey. Incredible win, isn't it? And yeah, Wolves are having a hell of a season. They're in the top half again. They've had one defeat in six. They don't really have any major injuries to talk about. And Huang He Chan is also back from the from the Asian Cup. Yeah, Wolves. They they're a tough tough team to predict, aren't they? Because they they do. It, it's never a surprise whatever they whatever they do. Like they. They can lose a game. You think, oh, well, it, it was bound to happen at some point. They've been in pretty good form recently. They, they were missing Huang, weren't they? But then they can just pull out results against pretty much anyone. And they, they're so competitive in games. Gary Neal is doing a fantastic job there. Brentford at the moment, they've got some really, really difficult fixtures coming up. So they're going to see this one. Maybe not as a must win, but a must not lose. Um, they just can't hold on to leads. They're, they can see too many goals. They've had no clean sheet in their last 12 matches, which I think is the worst 
current run in the Premier League worse than Sheffield United. And I just don't think that they'll get one here either. They lost 4-1 to Wolves at home and that was only a few weeks ago. So I feel like I have to go for another Wolves win, even though Ivan Tony's back and Mopay's in the goals. I'm going for another close one here. I'm going for 2-1 Wolves at Molyneux. Hmm. I'm in that all three outcomes possible um, state, even though acknowledging Wolves' incredible um, win at Chelsea. I think I'm going to cancel myself out. I haven't played a dullard 1-1 yet, have I? So I'm going to throw it in here and play my 1-1. What's the opposite of a joker? I'm going to play my politician card. 1-1 I'll go for and um, no fireworks and some cancelling out here. Um, a hard place to go is always Nottingham Forest, and it's Nottingham Forest versus Newcastle United. What do you reckon? Well, you say it's a hard place to go, Ben. Um, at home recently, they've lost five of their last six. So okay, I'll take that, I'll take that is, back immediately is, then. <laughs> well, not a happy home life at the moment. <laughs> But it, last season, it was the, it was completely their home form. I think they had the worst away form in the whole league, but they had the 10th best home form, and that's what kept them up. And they'll hope that slowly under Nuno Espirito Santo, they get a little bit of that home buzz back. They did beat Manchester United, of course, at home only a few weeks ago. So they proved that they've, they've still got it. Um, seven points from six games is has been a decent return for Nuno. I know that they had a few struggles in the FA Cup. Um they beat Newcastle 3-1 in December, didn't they? Chris Wood hat-trick. That, that win came out of nowhere, didn't it? Unfortunately mm. for Forrest, Chris Wood is out injured now, so he won't be playing in this one. Newca- we, we talk about Forrest last season. Their success was built on their home form. Newcastle's success was built on how strong their defence was. But they've conceded 15 in their last five in the league. Um, I think they've already conceded four more goals than they did in the entirety of last season as well, which is which is incredible, really. Um, he'll hope to have Anthony Gordon fit. I feel like we say this every week. He seems to take mm. a lot of knocks, but then is see, then usually is able to get himself out onto the pitch. So fair play to him. Um, neither side is in good form. So this is where I'm going to play my boring 1-1. Get it out. Slap it down on the table. <laughs> That's a bad turn of phrase. <laughs> um, I just can't see... Forest beating Newcastle twice in such quick succession. I I just feel the other victory was an outlier on on Boxing Day. Um, so I'm going to completely contradict myself um, that the city ground is a hard place to go. And I'm actually going to back Newcastle to get the win. So I will go Forest 1, Newcastle 2. And we will move on to Arsenal, who, as you rightly point out, could um, could be chasing um, Man City at the top of the table if they win early on in the round. Yeah, they could. Uh, we'll start with West Ham first. They've finally lost six, six spots. It felt like they were in sixth place for ages. <laughs> they haven't won a game in all competitions since beating Arsenal back in December. They were on a really good run at the end, the end of 2023. It's been a bad start to the new year. They have had injuries and absences, but... They had Kudus back in the team last week, but they're just not the same team going forward without Lucas Pakatar. I think they can afford to to set up in the traditional David Moyes way. Um, lots of sort of defensive, industrious players, but then have Lucas Pakatar just creating stuff and Bowen running in behind and then Kudus as well. But without without the Brazilian, they're just not quite the same attacking unit. Arsenal, were, as I said earlier, were hugely impressive at Liverpool. Three wins in a row now, so they look like they're over their blip and Saka's back to his best as well. Artes will hope Saka and Jesus are both fit. Jesus didn't play against Liverpool. Saka limped off, um, but I think that's one that he'll probably be okay with. They had a damaging draw at West Ham last season. I thought they lost it, but looking back, it was a draw. I think Arsenal were 2-0 up and ended up drawing 2 all. That They want revenge for that one. They've got a really good record against um, West Ham. They've only lost one of their 15 away games at West Ham um, over the last few years. I think the the one West Ham win in that run, Declan Rice was the, the goal scorer. And obviously he's now in the red of Arsenal. I'm going for, I'm being quite safe this week, really, Ben. So I'll apologise for that. I'm not sure I'm going to get any bonus points anywhere. Um, I'm going for a 2-1 away Arsenal win. 
you just got to whack a high scoreline in somewhere and the bonus point is guaranteed. If you tell me that mm. Xiao Pedro is going to score a penalty in your Spurs 2, Brighton 1, you can have a you could have a big bonus point for um for that one as well. Okay, Sorry, I'll what did you go? Back. What did you go, Arsenal? I went two one Ar- two one Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, look, there is no safety in predictions because nobody's good at them. So um you can be as safe as you like. But um I just thought Arsenal were really good against Liverpool and I think I think they're gonna they're gonna have to be informed because we think Man City are gonna keep winning, but I think they're gonna I think you're going to have a little bit of an acceleration now, Arsenal. So I'm going to back them for the win. And instead of 2-1 that you've gone for, I'll go for 2-0 to the Arsenal. And Aston Villa, on the back of a 5-0 away win last time, host, always fun to talk about, Manchester United. Yes, and this is the Eric Jemba Jemba derby band. <laughs> we haven't done a, a derby this week, have we? So traditional, Villa have an awful, awful record against Manchester United at Villa Park. They were winless in 23 games against them. Everybody remembers the the you win nothing with kids game at the start of the season back in, what was it, 93, 94 or 94, 95. Long time ago, they just carried on failing to win against Manchester United. I always picture Paul Scholes rattling in goals at, at Villa Park for some reason. Um, but last season, in I think it was Unai Emery's first game, Villa turned Man United over at Villa Park, 3-1 win, and then went on that incredible home run where they, I think they lost, what, one or two games in, in a calendar year. Um, they blew Sheffield United away last week. Leon Bailey returned to the, the Villa team, and as I predicted, he, he had too much for Sheffield United. They blew them away in the first half. Um, he's in great form. Pal Torres could return and as I said last week they're just a much better defensive unit when he's he's in the team Manchester United might they be back maybe they, they've been way more clinical in the last couple of games and Kobe Miner has given Manchester United fans something to be excited about hasn't he um, they're usually decent in February as well they're unbeaten in their last 24 February matches there you go there's That's a stat tremendous. for you um <laughs> And I think because Villa lost that home home record a couple of weeks ago, I don't know. I think the the fans could could easily get a bit tetchy if if things aren't going their way, and it, they'll be le- they'll be able to make less of a positive impact than they have done over the last few months. I I never really seem to get Manchester United right, but I'm going for them to win this week. Um, I've gone for a two one win for them at Villa Park. I might go for the draw on this one, although I need a bonus point from somewhere. Three all um, draw. I think that might be. I think that might be the solution here, mightn't it? So for my bonus point, I'm not going to get one for Desmond, am I? So let's throw in Villa three, Man United three, a thriller at the Villa. Finally, uh, Crystal Palace versus Chelsea. Yeah, this is a real misery fest, this one, isn't it? <laughs> like, neither <laughs> neither fan base very happy at all. They both shipped four goals last weekend. Um, just for Palace at the moment, there's there's no Eze, there's no Elise now, there's no Mark Gay. I know Elise came on against Brighton and, and got injured and there was talk of should he have played, should he have come on because the game was already lost and I think Roy Hodgson has lost even more credit amongst the Crystal Palace fans after that decision. As he came on and got injured, see Elise very nearly went to Chelsea in the summer, didn't he? Chelsea are back in the bottom half, um, which might seem like bad news. But when they've been in the bottom half this season, which has been quite a lot, they've won six of their seven matches. When they're in the top half, uh, they, they've they lost two in 12. So they're just a bizarre team, aren't they? They should win this one. Um, I've gone for a, another 2-1 win, this time for Chelsea. So the only way Palace win this is one nil, isn't it? So, what did you go for, Mikey? Two one, Chelsea. I see, like pa- Palace away at Chelsea. I could see, although it hasn't happened over the last few years. You think if they had Eza and Elise fit, and they had Mark Gay at the back, who makes a big difference. You could see them playing that counter attacking game like they used to with Wilfred Zaha. But without either of those, two, I think it's going to be really difficult. Um, another stat I'll throw in: they've had, they've lost twelve of that. Well, they've lost twelve games in a row against Chelsea. It's a, a real bogey team for them. 
I went 2-1 Chelsea, but maybe I should have been a little bit bold, more bold with that one. Shall I, shall I change it? I'm going to change it to 4-1 Chelsea. <laughs> Do you want a bonus point for that? Uh, no, I'll keep it for Jal Pedro, I think. Okay, Jal Pedro's in. Uh, I'll go for a more straightforward Chelsea win then. And they're not going to be happy campers if this happens, but I'll go Crystal Palace nil, Chelsea two. So just to confirm, Mikey, we're going to throw your bonus point at Spurs Brighton, but we need not only a Jal Pedro goal, we need a Jal Pedro penalty goal as well. Yeah. Okay. So that is hugely bold and well worth the bonus point, as opposed to my just pick a high scoring draw in Aston Villa versus Manchester United. Um, guys, thank you so, so much for all your comments and all your support. We are growing in numbers um, for this show and we really, really do appreciate it. As I said at the top of the show, Mikey, there are two types of people. Um, I, on my channel, I sometimes call them um, Richard and Dick. Um, so uh, Richard would, you know, comment before and put some predictions in, whereas Dick is just going to wait till afterwards. Um, and the moral of the story is be a Richard, don't be a dick. And on that bombshell, um, Mikey, um, do you want to have the last word? Just enjoy the football. And if, if you're putting a bet on, don't, don't use my predictions as a guide. <laughs> now, you might see a YouTuber with millions of subscribers and views a week driving a Bentley. It's a bit more modest, I have to say, when you're covering the championship. So if you can find a few quid each month to support over on Patreon or by hitting the join button here, you are making the world of difference for myself, Shaley and Enid.